It's finally here. One of the most requested ideas on the Bubble Ideas board. The table element has arrived and I'm going to demo it to you right now. So I've got my app here and the data that I'm going to be displaying is my contact data, which you can see here in my Bubble database. And this is so quick, easy. You can tell that they've, they've really put a lot of thought into how this element works. So I'm going to add a table to my page. And then much like a repeating group, so much of this is like using groups and repeating groups, but the layout is in the table. And so it's just going to help you align all of those columns. Uh, so we're going to go contacts and we're going to say do a search for all contacts. And then there's two main ways as well as the alignments of the rows and columns that this is different to a repeating group. One is that we have uh, this like a static row. And then we've got what Bubble are calling like infinite rows, like recurring rows. And so in this static row, I will put a text label and I'll say uh, first name. And much like a group, we've got all of the alignment options here. And then I'm going to copy that into there and this time write uh, last name. And uh, I think I have a field called country. Okay, so that's my header, done. I could then paste into my basically first cell of the repeating group, uh, but it's the bubble table element. Uh, and so this is where I make it dynamic. And so I say current rows, contacts, first name. And this time I'm gonna uh, say 100% width. This rows, contacts, last name. This rows, contacts, country. Now, of course, you could, like you could in a group on a page, you could put an image in here, you could put icons, you could uh, have them displayed uh, conditionally based on the fields, in this case, in contact. Um, let's preview it. And then I'm going to discuss a few things that I think uh, I ho hope they've got in the pipeline uh, and would really um, help things along. Uh, so one thing a little bit like how when you're using a repeating group for some reason there's a default height set um so we can clear that out by by clicking the cell uh no in fact click in the uh where is it layout click in the row layout there we go so i'm selecting the repeating row and the min height and i'm going to say fit height to content and then get rid of the min height and then on here, I'm going to also say fit height to content and get rid of the min height. Uh, and then you could apply some padding in there, um, but I just wanted to get rid of all of the unnecessary space. And you can see there that my table is all together. Now, something that I've noticed you based on the conditional statements is that we can add in a when this row uh, is hovered. And so if I make the, uh, the the standard color white, I can say that this row is hovered and then I can change the background color, make it nice F2, F2 gray. Uh, let's preview that. Okay, we've got that nice effect. Now what I hope they add in is there's no row index value. And so if you're wanting to add in that really cool table look where your your rows alternate colors, uh, then I'm not finding a way to do that right now. I will just have a quick check. You, can you refer to uh, current rows? Ah, current rows index. You can access it there, but you can't access it here. So I really hope that they add in the ability to get this row's index in. Um, I mean, one workaround you could possibly do is if each of your cells, uh, so for example, if I wrap this in in another group, I can then say this uh, current row's index um, modulo two is zero. So basically finding is it odd or is it even? I can then change the 
background color. Uh, I'm going to just make it stand out by making it a red. Um, and you get the idea. We should now see, yeah, so it's going to be all of the even numbers are going to have a red background. And then you could apply that in each of your columns. So that's one way, but they, it would be really helpful if they could set it universally uh, when you select the row, if you can do it conditionally in here. Now, hopefully this is just the start of what I would love to see is the ability to uh, click on a header and for it to, um, for, it, for it to sort by name. Hopefully they would expand upon uh, just being able to sort alphabetically. We obviously would love to be able to sort uh, date data um, and all other data types in bubble. If we can rearrange the table by clicking on the header, that's going to be great. But I feel like, uh, yeah, most upvoted idea on the bubble ideas board. Uh, we've seen this previewed and sort of hints that many times on Twitter over recent months. Uh, and finally, it's here. So please uh, leave a comment below uh, if you're excited about the bubble table element, if you've got any questions. And do remember that we've got over a 100 bubble tutorial videos, uh, some which you can't find anywhere else, available on our website, planetnocode.com.